Welcome back to the VR League brought to you by Intel live here from our ESL Cologne studios. I'm Jason Kaplan and joined for the first time ever by a man who uh, is actually taller than in per that you see on the screen, <laughs> I swear. Uh, is Blue, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great. It's, uh, I'm glad to be back for season two of the VR League after uh, uh, helping out with the first season a couple months ago. So it's yeah. going to be a blast to be joining totally, us here. I totally botched the intro there because I was, I was going <laughs> to go two directions, talk about how tall you are or talk about your experience in Germany so far because uh, I don't think it's your first time here. No, it's not. I've been here a few times. You also got to already experience the pleasure of Sundays in Germany. That's that's true. Unfortunately, nothing is open on Sundays in Germany, apparently. So I've been trying to like get everything together, get grocery shopping done and all that. But apparently that's, that's it's, not something you can do here It's one Sunday, of the most so. frustrating <laughs> things ever. And the funny thing is, he talked about his hotel is like, yeah, tomorrow I really need to go buy a fan because the AC in my hotel just isn't doing it. And I'm just like, are you kidding me? AC? Almost 99% of the people in Germany don't have air conditioning. <laughs> and you do, and it's not this enough is, for you. This is someone who just came from Los Angeles in like the 115 degree yeah, heat. I was where say. I've got a constant like generator churning out AC oh ready God. to go there. But I, I'm amazed. I'm amazed. So. But you know what? <laughs> I'm going to come chill at your place uh, figuratively and literally, and we'll see, <laughs> we'll see how that works out. Um, but guys, yeah, this is finally, as we made our way through the last couple of weeks, it's the stage final. Stage finals number two here for North America. And we get to bring you the top eight teams and see which two most importantly go through into the world qualifiers for North America. America and Europe, respectively. I believe Europe just actually finished um, before we started the show today or is on the verge of finishing. So we'll get to see who those two teams are a little bit later on today. But to kind of break down how this whole this whole shebang goes, let's just kind of show you the structure of how all these qualifiers, how um, the, the Ec Arena ladder plus the Gopher rankings and the last chance qualifier all feed into the Oculus Connect coming up. Yeah, and as we can see, of course, we have our first six cups, which I believe most of them have already been played out at this point. We are going to be having a few more coming up a little bit later on, along with two additional teams, one being determined by the highest go for ranking and another determined via the highest ranking in-game via the Echo Arena Lighter will qualify for these stage finals, one of which will be playing out today, along with the last chance qualifier, which then leads into the world qualifiers, at which point two teams will come out of those going into Oculus Connect 5 at the end of September. See, I'm really looking forward to the last chance qualifier just to see if there's some teams that come out of nowhere and just surprise yeah. you because obviously you're expecting the teams who don't qualify through the first stage the second stage and the third stage will be participating in this but i want to see a team that just comes out of nowhere and steals away a slot i don't know i love those those upset stories we've had a lot of just very cool stories in general throughout the vr league so far we had a uh, hasco as well from the last season who played in the na region she's actually a mother uh, uh who had like her three sons or something like that playing on the same team with her and interestingly enough yeah. she played a striker position which okay. means she was the one who was just in charge of punching everyone so i thought i thought that was it was a really amazing story that we had come out of the last season. Right, I'm just thinking about their setup at home. <laughs> like, how often does she accidentally punch one of her uh, one of her sons? Yeah. And then says, Who that's knows? what you get for being too yeah. close to me. Um, yeah, get more aggressive out there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> come on, pick it up. Um, but we do also have a prize pool. What would there be a tournament without prize money on the line here? And we're going to break down exactly what you can win for all those teams out there. And first place, that's a whopping 30 grand. I would not say no to that at all. Absolutely. A lot of for grabs as well for teams that make second, third, even fourth place split between your team, of course. But second place, we're taking home 18K, 12K for third place. And our fourth place team, well, it's not as much. It's still nice. 7,500. <laughs> not as much. I mean, you know, I, I, if you Listen, don't want to take it. We're trying to make some competitors here. We're trying to push them forward. We want, we want our fourth place team to be our first place team. And of course, what's so important about that is the fact that if you do get through the world qualifier for EU or for NA, because it's only two teams from each region, you're you're already in the money. Yep. You're already guaranteed that 7,500 bucks. 
Absolutely. So and, managing yeah, I, to make it at least up to the uh, stage finals and then through that is going to give you quite a pretty penny to take home, regardless of your results at the world finals. I think we can actually maybe like cut those numbers down about like 20% and then just say they're lower and then we keep the money. Oh, is that know. possible? We'd have to plan that. Hmm. Next show. Wait next show. See. Just, just we'll talk. Yeah, <laughs> someone's going to screenshot the, num the prize pool numbers from this one, compare it to next one, be like, wait a minute, something's up here. Why is first place only 15 grand? Talk As we to show the... up in our tuxedos and our Lambos outside <laughs> and everything like that. Um, but of course, like the thing is, what's so great about the VR League, anyone can play. Anyone can sign up, Blue. Absolutely. Anyone can sign up, and we're going to show you guys now how you might just be able to do that, too, as there's going to be plenty of room for you to be able to jump online and sign up through our ESL Cups right on the VR web or the VR League website as well. There's going to be plenty of opportunities to do it, and I'll show you that right now. Once you do manage to get to the website, you're going to go right here, click on this Participate page, and you can see the link right now on the bottom left. For this game, of course, you'd be clicking on this page here for Echo Arena, but we also have Sprint Vector as well, along with the Unspoken. So just go ahead and click on Echo Arena, and you can see it here now. Most of our upcoming Cups are currently live, but if you head here in about a day or so, you will be seeing our cups that are still to come right here on this part of the page, and that's where you'll be able to put your team together, sign up, and get ready to jump into the action for future weeks and hopefully future stage finals as well if your team manages to be good enough to qualify. My question is, Blue, are we allowed to play in some of these cups? Are we contractually we obligated try. to not? Because There I, might be a clause. Yeah. I don't remember seeing a clause in my contract saying that I cannot participate. Now, being good enough to actually get through the cups and you know make it into one of the stage finals is a completely different story. But I know I've I've know I've seen you cast. I get to cast you now for the first time, and I know we can play and cast at the same time. I bet we might be able. To, it might be a little bit difficult in VR though. That's because it would be. Oh, this, it definitely this is would a very be. like physically intensive game actually. So we might get. We might be like he's going to the field. <sighs> he's trying to make it down to the goal. <laughs> Having to yeah. take massive no, breaths every two seconds. It would be great because you know what we would come out. You know five kilos skinnier. Probably, and I can yeah. use the five kilos off of me, Same. personally. Um, let's actually take a look at the brackets for today's show, because it's eight teams going head-to-head -head in a double elimination bracket. As we said before, the top two teams will be getting through into the world final, or the world qualifier. And as you can see here, we have a lot of names returning. The one that already stands out to me is going to be Eclipse off the board. Yeah, Eclipse as well showing up is uh, definitely a lot of NA legends coming in to that roster. And I'm curious to see as well, because I haven't I haven't been keeping up as much with any of the team reformations that we had happen after season one. So I'm going to be curious to see if we have any additional names reappearing on these other teams that are also trying to make it through and qualify, of course, for the next stage of the VR League here today. And yeah, and as you can see, it's some elimination. It's going to be best of through the entire way through until we get to the finals, the grand finals. Um, obviously, the two teams participating will be through into the World Qualifier, so that's not a big deal, but seeding's really going to matter. So whoever wins that comes through as the first seed, whoever loses comes through as the bottom seed. And obviously, going through into you know the, the, the big money-making area, you want to be able to have that highest seed possible. Yeah, absolutely. You want to be giving yourself the best chance possible yeah. to make it through in probably the quickest way possible uh, at the uh, regional finals, which we'll be having in a, little, in a little while once we get later into the season. So I don't actually even know what's the first match we're going to. Hopefully, someone in production can kind of communicate that that to me. I would, um, I would assume we'd probably follow the Eclipse guys. I, I would kind of hope so. I think they're actually still just trying to figure out who they do want to go for first, but maybe we should kind of take a step back here, talk about what Echo Arena is, just for people who are at home who have never seen this game. Um, you, had, you had a description that was perfect for me, actually, because I tried comparing it to a lot of these other sports, and you said it's like Ultimate Frisbee. Maybe not Ultimate Frisbee per se. I did say that before, though. Okay, uh, all right, zero, okay you're backtracking. Z zero <laughs> gravity. Because <laughs> I forget if Ultimate Frisbee is played with goalposts or not, if, if, or if it's... Isn't Ultimate Frisbee like golf more so? Not that I'm thinking about it. Well, no, so, okay, there is golf, um, fr Frisbee golf, yeah. where you, you throw it basically just like golf, and yeah. you try to throw it and hit the post. But there is Ultimate Frisbee, where you play team against team, and you try to get it into the other okay, side. Okay, so it was, I was thinking of the right yeah. thing. Man. Okay, so yeah, so basically zero gravity. We'll go back so to back that. Backtrack it again. Backtrack it again. Right, right where we started, boys. But <laughs> it is going to be basically zero gravity, Ultimate Frisbee. However, as you said, it's zero gravity, so there's a lot of cool ways that you can amplify your movement. There's islands floating all over the place throughout the course of the map that you can swing yourself off of, and it's physics based as well so that's going to propel yeah. you even more forward you can jump off your opponents or your teammates to slingshot yourself down the field more quickly and we'll talk about that a little bit more when we actually get into the game and of course the ultimate goal is the disc which spawns in the center of the arena with the ultimate goal being to score it on your opponent's goalpost. yeah and i'm really excited because i mean the thing is yeah we're in germany and germany unfortunately um well they did suck in the world cup 
I can say that because you know what? we didn't even qualify. Yeah, we didn't for even the qualify. World Cup. So, uh, but you get to hang out with the English player, or the English people we know here. Uh, the, you know, the Joe Millers, um, the Apollos, uh, Henry G, <laughs> if he's still here or still be around, because we have the semifinals come up next week. But I, I mentioned the World Cup because to me it plays a lot like football or soccer. Yes, in, in a lot of senses of how to play the four position, the striker position, as you as you mentioned before, or the anchor, the goalie position as well. And it's such a, a really intense game, and you actually hear the communication of the teams quite a bit. Some half was really clear and concise communication and comms. Others are frantically screaming of like, hey, I'm open, open, throw it to me, throw it to me, I got this. And it just gets really hectic, but they make it work somehow. And one of the cool elements of the fact that it is using uh, open comms in-game as well, so it's a lot like what we've seen in the past in like Battle Royales and things like that, where you can talk to people that are within proximity. Most of these VR games, including Echo Arena, of course, work just like that. And that's a very unique element because in most games, uh, communication is separated off into like two separate TeamSpeak channels and you have no chance of hearing your opponent. Now you have to be a little bit careful, especially in the more tactical games like we've seen like Onward, obviously tactics and whatnot being called and are not going to be as impactful in a game like Echo Arena, but you still can give away things to your opponents, technically speaking, if they're close enough in terms of what you're going to be doing down Greatest field. mind game right there. Yeah. The greatest mind game. If we're playing 1v1, or not 1v1, 3v3, and I'm like, let's do the blue play. You'll be like, wait, what's the blue play? <laughs> and you'll freak yep. out. Uh, but you're, you're hearing us obviously describe what Echo Arena, or Echo Arena is, sorry. Um, but let's just take a look at a video that can kind of describe it maybe better than we can. Dynamic VR controls made a zero gravity movement system as you and your robotic teammates take on all comers in this competitive multiplayer title from Ready at Dawn Studios. The premise is simple enough. Score points by throwing, bouncing, and ricocheting the disc into the opponent's goal. Teams will earn two points for a short range goal and three points for sinking the disc at long range. Whoever has the most points at the end of the five minute game timer wins the round. Whichever team wins two of the three rounds is the match winner. It's not just about accurate throws of the disc. The map is full of obstacles. Players will have to use Zero Gravity's dynamic movement options to navigate, and they each have personal thrusters to propel themselves around the map. Using the arena is a critical part of any winning strategy. Like any sport, Echo Arena isn't just about offense. Defense is central to the game, and a good goalie can make all of the difference. Players can also gain an upper hand by incapacitating enemies with a powerful punch that will free the disc and provide opportunities for breakaways and defensive clears. And as you can see there, the punching going to be a very vital part of how all of these games do go down. And speaking of games, we have our first one. It's going to be Eclipse, like you mentioned, up against Boost Junkies. And I believe we're already ready into the game. So let's drop in as soon as possible so we don't miss any of the action. And it looks like we did miss a little bit of it as Boost Junkies, I think, had scored two points there. Yeah, Boost Junkies actually doing pretty well. And I immediately recognize this team as well. This is one of our very, very strong teams in the North American regions here going under, I believe, a different name than the last time I managed to cover it. But Simeon, Lemming, and Palador are all very experienced players when it comes down to the Echo Arena scene. So we've already had the opening push coming out. Right now, Boost Junkies are actually making a pretty good offensive play. Problem is, they don't have someone moving forward to try and knock out their goalie. So he's able to push forward pretty quickly, make a very nice return. In fact, oh, it almost angled off that diamond properly enough to get banked in for a three-pointer there. Just going to miss it slightly. And thankfully, again, Boost Junkies do slingshot themselves back to their side to quickly clear it back over to the Orange's end. That's what I really want to see. The people mastering the angles to be able to throw from downtown from their side of the arena down to the other side to potentially score a point, especially if you overcommit your, your attacking phase. Boost Junkies, it's like coming in from behind. Simone can actually get that relatively easily as we uh, do have uh, a couple of different styles where you have some teams who leave that anchor role, who leave that like defender playing at midfield when you're being aggressive and attacking so you can get back to the goal as quick as possible and pick up the disc. Otherwise, you've seen teams, as I think I think Eclipse just did there, was have all three players on the offensive. That's why you saw when the disc was cleared, it took them so long to retrieve it. Yeah, absolutely. So Eclipse is going to be able to get themselves another score because of that, which means they now have that pretty comfortable lead going in their direction. Position this time, though, should be heading over to our orange team, which is actually Boost Junkies, so... A little bit of a clarification there from earlier, but Boost Junkies okay, being our right. orange team. Yeah. Clips, yeah, that makes more sense as well. With the Clips being our blue team, we're going to see them have to play a little bit defensively, and we've got one of them hanging on here, but in fact, unfortunately, he gets punched out, which is going to allow Boost Junkies to clear it over to Eclipse's side of the arena once again. Again, Daisy chaining back towards their side of the arena, able to pick it back up again. Looks like Lemming has the disc in his hand, just waiting for his teammate to clear himself away for this, and Z trying to get aggressive. He can somehow get the punch off. Might have been able to steal that away and potentially score the first points here for Boost Junkies. But again, the disc not cleared on the other side of the field. 
And it looks like for the most part, it's just going to be Palador by himself against two, if he can even get the disc in time. And he actually will be able to. And I like this play, Blue. He's playing slow. He didn't try to rush anything, waiting for those teammates to come up and make some sort of play happen. He tried to rush in there for sure. Someone would have knocked him out or at least stolen possession. But now, look, they've set their teammates up nice and easily. Oh, great defense put up by the goalie, though. Teku is going to be able to just barely save that and take it back up to the midfield. No clear just yet, though. There's still too much swarming around here right now coming out for the Eclipse guys, so it's going to be problematic because now the goalie's outside of the post. He tries to go for a long-range three-pointer, but it's just barely going to miss. Managed to ding off the post. Now we've got them trying to get back possession again. They've got a pretty good grouping right now, managing to box ro uh, rocks that have been in control of it. So Palador is going to be able to pick it up once again and try to make a push. Got to wait a few seconds here, trying to get their teammates set up. There's the pass over to Lemming. He's going to swing forward down to the other teammate, but again, it's another miss as they ding off the post once again, sadly. Yeah, but look how much time they've had the disc in their possession. Like, they've been maintaining this attack, I'd say for the last minute, minute and a half, if not more than that, and constantly keeping this pressure on against Boost Junkies, who have been unable to really clear it and unable to, most importantly, get any momentum. But speaking of that, looks like Rox was actually able to go for a huge throw from downtown, but didn't really have any success with it. And again, Paldor is going to pick the disc back up, try to clear it another time. They're up 4-0. They've got a minute remaining here, Blue, so they can try to drag the time out, but you know they want more points. Absolutely, and they're definitely going to go for it when they have at least a two-goal lead at this point, or a safe two-goal lead. But at the same time, our orange team, the guys on Boost Chunky, is doing a very good job of playing defensively. It's unfortunate that we didn't see that earlier in the game, which would have allowed this to be a little bit closer, as uh, we did see Eclipse sneaking off a few goals earlier on in the match, but at the moment, it's seeming like they just can't get through that defensive setup. It's too good. It is, I mean, it is a good defensive setup. The problem is they're down four points yeah. and they're unable to really get the disc and get any momentum going for their side. Finally, I should be able to get the uh, pickup for a second, but immediately Palador is going to be there playing that really far back defender for the team on the attack. Tries to get in very aggressive, tries to actually get around the side of them. Rocks Titan's actually able to stop this one from going in, but again, they're not able to maintain control of the disc. Actually, now Daisy chained across the, the, the entire arena and this should almost certainly be a point. This is going to be Oteku trying to make a play for it. Unless we get a slingshot out here, that's an assured three-pointer coming out for our orange team, coming out for the boost junkies right there as they finally pick up some points. But the problem is, again, only 15 seconds remaining, and they're not going to start this next round off with possession. So it's going to be very hard to try and score again. If they do score again, they win the match, at least with a two-pointer. However, it's still going to be incredibly difficult. So we're going to have to wait and see if they can do it with just a few seconds remaining in the opening round. It'll be so important to get this joust off appropriately for both sides, at least if you're defending here. For Eclipse, try to set up in a position to stop this from going in, because as long as you can hold on for another 14.88 seconds, you're going to be able to pick up this first map here. This first round, I guess we should call it, in this best of three. This joust coming out initially, but it's immediately thrown away just in the sake of wasting time here. So the guys on Eclipse look like they played it properly, less than five seconds, and they've got possession going, so I think it's a safe call now at this point to say. And indeed, it's assured now as Eclipse will be taking the opening round, and with that, they'll have a lead one to nothing in the series. Yep, yeah, you know... The thing is, I guarantee if your boost chunk is there, you're a little bit frustrated that they just kind of threw the disc around for such a long time at the end. But you got to respect the play. It wins you rounds. And when it's all about getting through into the grand final, getting through as a top two team into the world qualifier, you're going to take any one you can get. Yeah, pretty much. It was basically the story of Eclipse getting off to a nice early start. They were picking up like two goals within the first two minutes of it. And then, as you said, they're just wasting time for the remaining three or so minutes in the game there. And that was pretty much all they had to do. And that's a very valid strategy that we've seen a lot of teams use, even going back to season one. Speaking of that, wasting time. Like you said, scored the first two goals within the first two minutes. And then I'd say... Are the three minutes left, two minutes and 45 seconds where them holding onto the disc at possession time? Like, that's not a good sign if you're boost junkies, and you need to do something about that. They, they were able to stop the goals when it really mattered. Oh, obviously not the first two. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> that would on, really matter. Yeah, yeah but Pelodor, like would get their face of the disc, and they'd still block it out. But mm -hmm. the problem is, like, yeah, great, you can defend, but whenever you fall behind in points, where's your offense? Like, where's, your, where's the game that's going to, or the, the, the play to make you win the game? And if they can't get control of the disc and move across the, the arena appropriately, and Daisy Chain, which the one time they did score was because they got a little bit lucky um, that the defending side didn't have anyone to just kind of grab onto and get back with, then you can't really depend on plays like that to win you a match. The thing is, well, it didn't even really seem like the uh, the boost junkies' offensive work was that bad because they had like really good slingshot work and really good uh, work with their joust at the beginning of the one round we did get to see there at the end. Uh, so they got they had like good speed going across the entire match. The real problem was Eclipse's like cross field uh, passing work was like really good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For some reason, the guys on boost junkies were never really able to get good pathing prediction on where the disc was going when there was passes. So almost every time, every time somebody from Eclipse was like pressured to any degree, there was almost immediately someone else on his team ready to take a pass. That just 
allow them to keep possession for so long and really just waste a lot of time back on their side of the field. And I feel like I, I said his name, you know, quite a bit uh, during during the match we did see, but Palador, just the, the way he was playing defensively on the offense, it's, I know it's a conundrum, it's a catch-22, <laughs> defensively on the offense, but the, the kind of anchor role he's playing, the quarterback role, he always seemed to be at the right place at the right time. As you mentioned, you know, disc, um, pro, not projection. Prediction. Prediction. Yeah. Wow. Words are hard. Um, <laughs> the, the prediction of it, he was always there on point. He was always there at the right time to pick up the disc and keep the possession in their own hands to prevent the Boost Junkies from getting any sort of momentum. Or we, any saw, we, saw, we saw like three or four times that Eclipse was able to get basically like a point blank shot at the goal. Uh, granted, again, the few times we did get to catch it, uh, credit to the goalie that was coming out for Boost Junkies. He did a fantastic job. I saw there at the end, I think it was Paladar actually that tried to do the move where it's it's really hard to spot in game because the animation doesn't translate as well right now unless they've improved it recently. But basically, you do like an around the back shot where you transition the disc from your right hand, usually, or whatever your dominant hand is, over to your left hand, and then quickly try to slam it in. Righty. Okay, righty. I'm a lefty here. Are you a righty? Yeah, I am. Okay, well, there we go. That's okay. why I said right. But you know, for, for the people that really matter, when it's in your left hand and you go around, yeah, yeah. I'm messing with Whichever you. Whichever order it ends up being, you kind of just take it over to your other hand and you know you go to the full extent of your wing, wingspan and just try to slam it in the goal, like we almost saw right there, actually. But. Right? Is this, is it really 5-0? In the first minute and 15 seconds? Uh, is, that, is, that, is that right, I think we need, we need confirmation for production. Did they just on absolutely one. demolish Boost Chunkies off the get-go? That would be a three-pointer and a two-pointer scored. So that would have been two goals already. I'm going to assume it's actually 5-0. Okay, okay. Then, hey, credit to them. They're already up uh, you know, one game in the series. Yeah, no, it's there. You can see it. We see the scoreboard. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's there, Jason. Well, no, we didn't see it prior to that point. So. Yeah, no, no, I got you. And they just scored another one as well. A little bit close. I thought that would have been a three-pointer, but sadly, uh, I think Lemmings had to get a, a bit closer than he would have liked. So ends up slamming it on the two-pointer instead. But still at a 7-0 lead with still three and a half minutes to go in the game. I think it's a safe bet, say Eclipse. Nearly have this one secured already, unless they really mess up on their defensive setup now. Well, here we go. Coming into the Joust. 7 0. Boost Junkies. I don't want to count them out just yet. They still have time to work yeah. with. Look at that. Five stuns for Lemming, really being a big bruiser for his team. Five stuns and five points out of the seven. So he's been a bruiser and doing a really good job of just getting those punches off and launching off of that at the same time to get these this disc in. So this is already going to get a little complicated for the Boost Junkies. You can see the number 13 player got knocked out there. So he wasn't able to properly line up his pass to the number 14 player, Rock Titan, who was supposed to receive the pass. And now, yeah, Eclipse are going to get possession back. And as you can see, they're just trying to waste time. They don't really go for a accurate clear. They just try to send it down the field as quickly as possible. We uh, what are you doing? <laughs> Boost Junkies, you talked about this prediction that was in their side of the field. And yet somehow Eclipse come in with a daisy trade across the entire arena. They get control of the disc. They have not scored yet. But little mistakes like that are going to cost you. It almost seemed like they were just trying to swarm the goal and play defensively there but once again look at this password coming out again good defensive setup coming out here for the boost junkies their goalie succeeds in stopping it but now he's been stunned for the next couple of seconds here and a lot of them are getting surrounded solo so palador swings back that's a great move from palador right there has to do basically a 180 and quickly shoot it back into the goal but he gets the job done that's another three-pointer as well so eclipse are already up to 10 this is absolute domination coming out from one of the best teams in na like how you pointed out that uh he scored with his right hand <laughs> <laughs> no, so I was just watching you and you like did it with your right hand. Like, come on. I always man. try to I always try to if get a people. lefty did it, you would never have mentioned it. The cool thing with VR is it is physical. So I always try to like to translate what's what they're doing with their actual hands. I hope, I hope production is like keeping track of that and can like do a little highlight video back. <laughs> like all the, <laughs> all the motions yeah. I'm making while we're not even on camera. 10-0 yeah. though. Already half the time has passed by here in our second round of this best of three. It's so far clips up 10 points, looking to take it into well, pretty much the next round for them. And, and keep in mind it is double elimination. So if loose junkies do get knocked out here or lose here, they still have another chance from the loser bracket, but it's not going to get any easier from there. Again, a really good, uh, great disc clear there coming out of Eclipse. Wow, now look, everyone, look, look at the map. Look at the map. Everyone's locked down on that side of the map. Boost Junkies are going to be a little bit slow to get here. Luckily for them, they do get the disc in time because they're being punched nonstop. But Eclipse wasn't able to get the Daisy Chain across the field in time. Yeah, Boost Junkies had a little bit more speed, I think, on their Daisy Chain. Eclipse, I think, actually got off first, but it looked like Boost Junkies had more speed or they got a re-grab or something like that. So it's going to be a little bit awkward here. Palador is able to steal possession once again. And they're open goal post. And it's going to go right over to Simeon and inside of the goal, close proximity. Another two points up for Eclipse. And again, domination continues for these guys. They now lead 12 to nothing over the Boost Junkies in the second round. I know you guys can't see it at home, but Blue, can you do the, what, what, how did you score for me? Uh, there he did, probably just slammed it yeah, right yeah, in. That's good, that's good. Yeah. You guys can't see it at home, but I swear, <laughs> that was exactly what I saw translated from the screen by Blue. You, perfect, you'd be a great mime as well, I'd say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so a minute 43 left to go, Eclipse up 12-0. 
looking like it's going to be a very one-sided uh, you know, round two here between these two teams, but I'm not going to count them out just yet. If we get to that minute mark, I think that's where I'm going to start to really kind of lose faith and boost junkies. I think there is a chance for them to come back, but it's going to take one hell of an exchange, one hell of a ride. One hell of a streak and a lot of three-pointers yeah. as well, which is the possibility for that's already gone at the moment. But once again, Eclipse gets themselves the better end of this quick boost to the other side of the arena, and we'll be able to get another quick clear. As sadly for boost junkies, has become the very common pattern that we've seen. So they're going to go in, and yeah, once again, their trajectory is a little bit off. It's a little bit hard to aim, sadly, when you do those slingshots, so you can't blame them that much for that, but they're going to get slung over there, and once again, it's going to be stuck on their side of the arena as Eclipse picks it up first, and it goes right in this time as well. Boost Junkies' second goal in a row now where they've just had a completely open post. Yeah, I, I know I'm being a little harsh on Boost Junkies, and I'll, I will admit, I do apologize for that, but when you see the way Eclipse are playing and how often they can daisy chain across yeah. the entire arena and get the disc in time, it just you want to see that kind of play, and if Boost Junkies can't pull off those... I say little things, those, those complexities, those little complexities, then I don't think they can beat Eclipse. It's very difficult as well just to try and, uh, it takes like a lot of training from what I've been told to try and make sure that you're doing your slingshots properly because you don't get as much uh, control over like turning and things like that the faster you're going. It's a little bit harder to adjust the speed just based on the way physics works, sadly. So it's not a whole lot you can do to get around that. <laughs> So we are going to see Boost Junkies once again okay, getting... I mean, he's just all over yep. him. He, he actually gave no chance for them to even pick up that disc again and get it cleared. And now Powder has it. Again, he goes back. He has two defenders drawn in against him. It's a two-on-one -on, on the goal. Nice this is an out. easy score. And it's going to go. Lemming just casually slapping it in right there as they manage to pick up their 17th point here in the second round. And we still have 45 seconds left as well. That was a nice actually fake, I think, that we saw there from Lemming. Wanted to make it look like he was falling back to pass it to a teammate, but then all of a sudden flip back around and send it over to his two teammates who are already waiting by the goalpost ready to score. That actually, I think, got Boost Junkies goalie a little bit off their goal and just left it open for them to score once again. Yeah, see, I'm no pro or anything, so, you know, keep that in mind when I say this, but if you're new to the game and you're trying to play, you, you can't have those two-on-one um, defenses happen like that where Paldor lures two of you out and then he just punches you so you can't actually daisy chain back and help your, uh, your last defender, your goalie. Every time, though, Lemming's been constantly going back into the quarterback and going for the punch just so he doesn't feel they, safe. They stopped them this time successfully. The problem is, obviously, the summer only lasts for about like three seconds, so by the time it went away, he was free from that, and now you can see he's already causing problems once again. Nice little boost is going to go off here. It should get Rocks tightened back over to the goal in time. They're having to play super defensively. Even Z was in the goal. They had two goalies, basically. Their goalie's out for the count now, so they've got to send Z back down to defend it, but it, once again, it's unsuccessful of an attempt to try and switch up the positioning, so Eclipse will score once more. Now 19-0, to zero. and sadly, it is coming down in these last few seconds, and I think it is a safe bet to say at this point that Eclipse pretty much have the match locked down. All right, well, I, you know, Blue, I'm going to almost have to call it here. 19-0 with 16 seconds. I don't think that's even possible within no. the realm of the game anymore. But Boost Junkies, they had a couple of good moments. They had a couple of lackluster moments. But Eclipse being the reigning, you know, best North American team, as you mentioned, they're showing it. And they're looking unstoppable, at least in this match. Absolutely, especially with this 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 uh, round here specifically. Obviously, our last one was a little bit closer. We would have liked to see the Boost Junkies bounce back, as they seem to be doing at the beginning of the previous round, but didn't happen this time. So we're coming out of the last few seconds. It's looking like Eclipse have got it. Oh, they would try to score one more time before the end. Would have been a little bit annoying for them, to be honest. There is, it would have just extended the game for a few seconds, but Eclipse do take it in dominant fashion, a 19 to zero, meaning they take the match as well, two to nothing. Was that one of the highest scoring games you've seen? I think it is the highest scoring game. Yeah, I've I think I've only think seen well. it go up to like 15 or 17 before, and that was with the opponent having other goals scored. So that was the highest lead I've ever seen right. in the game. Yeah. I mean, but they looked like they deserved it. And yeah. hopefully before we do head to a, a quick break, do we have the brackets updated if there's any other you know, results from other uh, from the other matches? I'm trying to do it on my side as well. Um, we know Eclipse did win, I believe, 11. I can't see their full name on my screen. Let me just, just give me one second. 11.5. Did pick up a victory, so I'm assuming that was a 2-0. 21 to 5, I guess, was the total score. Um, and they'll be playing against the winner of Metamerks and three men and a guy. I love that it's name. Just personally. four men, then. <laughs> um, you know, unless my terminology is wrong. Um, but Eclipse will move on to play against the winner of Titan and Omega Gators. Absolutely. And Omega Tours. <laughs> we had to. Oh. Yeah, that would I'm be. So uh, sorry, um, that, that just got me right more, there. It'd be more it's, Omega Gators, if it's, anything. It's, 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 it's technically Omega Tours, right? But it's Omega Gators. Yeah, Omega Gators. Omega Gators. Yeah. 
I don't know. I, I'm That's guaranteed I'm getting that wrong. <laughs> uh, but luckily for us, while we do have to wait for the next match to come up, and we can probably stop talking here in a second, uh, we do have a, a couple of videos to show you guys within these breaks when we do have these extended uh, extended times. And this one's going to be some high level commentary uh, of Echo Arena and like what you kind of expect and how you can learn to up your game a little bit more. So we'll see you guys after the break. In the meantime, enjoy this. Hey friends, it's Palador again, and welcome back to another video commentary. Uh, we're back 